Hi, this is Tiffany Sperling from Energy Wiz Kids Fitness, and I am so excited to be here at Lumiere Children's Therapy. Um, this is my first time at their new facility, so thank you for giving me the tour. Um, and this is Jackie. Jackie is a board certified behavioral an analyst. Um, she specializes in parent education and then also um, working with children with autism. Um, so she is quite an expert in all of the things that you parents need to know um, as far as the behavioral of your children and um, kind of what's typical, um, what types of things are going to enhance their experiences when it comes to activities that they're involved with, and then when there might be an area of concern and, and how you can broach that. Um, so thank you for talking to me today, Jackie. Um, I love all the staff here at Lumiere and I think you guys are doing awesome things. So I'm glad that you um, are partnering with Energy Wiz to help educate our parents. Um, yeah. So today we're going to talk about the benefits of consistency and repetition um, and how kids of different ages can benefit from being in activities that they do um, on an ongoing basis, um, how to gauge whether or not something is right for them, and um, what kind of questions that they can ask their children to find out if they like something or if they're getting the benefits that they need from it. So um, I think the first question is, is repetition of the same activity um, important for a child's development? Absolutely, yes. That's how all humans learn is through practice, <laughs> um, especially our little ones. So the more they practice the skill, the more they're going to feel confident about it, the, the better they're going to be. Um, and that's going to be across all domains, fitness and language and everything else. Right, yeah. So um, at Energy Wiz, we, we kind of have this philosophy of, um, we want things to be consistent, we want them to feel comfortable, but then we every so often need to get out of that comfort zone. So when we see something has been mastered, then we're gonna push them um, in that area, but also keep other things consistent. Um, and we've gotten really good results from that so far. Um, so I'm glad to, glad to hear that that is a, a way to approach it. That is empirically <laughs> supported by science. <laughs> that's what we were told, um, Dan. Yeah, so that is actually a term, it's called shaping. And so that's really how we wanna teach is um, there's that fine line between, you know, you wanna push your child out of their comfort zone while encouraging them, maintaining a positive environment, like you said, keeping other things consistent, um, letting them know that it's okay to be challenged, it's okay that it's difficult. Yeah. Um, sometimes things can be a little frustrating when they're new and mm -hmm. just giving that encouraging <laughs> feedback of, I hear your frustration, but you should try it. And then yeah. you know, a lot of the times we overcome that hump. Um, and once they try, try something new, they learn, they love it, and you know, it's no longer um, challenging. So I think you hit it on the head where uh, we want to encourage them, push them out of their comfort zone a little bit with, uh, uh, while still recognizing where their limits and their skill repertoires are. Yep, yeah, that's good. Um, what would you consider to be consistent in, um, attendance for a child participating in an activity? So it's a great question. Um, it's going to vary. Um, each child is different. Things that are going on at home can be different. Um, so there's a lot of variables. Uh, but definitely, definitely you want to try something more than once. We do know that. Yep. Um, the first time that they try something new, it's not going to be familiar. Um, it's going to be, uh, it can be a little intimidating and we can go over ways to prevent that um, as well. Uh, but definitely, definitely try it more than once. Yeah. I even always told, you know, I've been working with adults in fitness for years and years and years and um, probably one of the um, types of activities that people would give one try and they say, I hate it, is um, like spin classes or indoor <laughs> cycling. And I would always tell them every, you know, you, no one can make a judgment of their first time of taking a cycling class. You have to give it two or three times. And then after that, you can determine whether you love it or hate it. But a lot of people that thought they hated it the first time really ended up exactly. liking it and, and didn't know what they would do without it. But if they hadn't given it those extra times, um, they wouldn't know. And it, it is tough the first time. There's a lot of things exactly. that are tough the first time, but it's also very rewarding once you get past that and realize that, oh, it was just difficult or exactly. it was challenging. <laughs> and it's also going to increase the kiddo's motivation. Once they start to like learn those skills, then they're going to start to feel confident. Then they're going to feel like, oh my goodness, I did this. I right. couldn't do this last time. Um, and then when, when the child starts feeling that empowerment and that confidence, that's really going to increase their motivation and want to keep coming back. Whereas if you just let it that first time, like you said, um, that's a new, that's something new. Maybe they haven't established those feelings. Right. Um, so we kind of touched on a couple of my the questions that I had. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump on to some other ones. 
Um, how often and how many times should a child participate in an activity before determining whether they like it or they're good at it? So being good at something, I would say, <laughs> is extremely relative, especially for little ones. Um, I always like to say as long as they're enjoying it and they are making progress from when they first started, no matter how small, um, that's all that matters. Right. Um, especially for me working with children who have autism, sometimes those milestones are so small. Sometimes they're the difference between saying buh, buh, and buh, right. you know. Um, so as long as the child is making progress, that's really all that matters. Right, no, I, I absolutely agree. Um, some of the teeniest, tiniest baby steps that no one would even notice mm -hmm. are some of the most rewarding things yeah. for me to, to see when, when we're working with the kids. Um, so are there any questions that you would ask a child after completing an activity to gauge whether they enjoyed it um, or if it's something that they are getting the benefits from? Yeah, so um, from just from a language standpoint, with our little with our little friends, uh, I'd say under six, uh, five or six, then we definitely want to ask specific questions and then build on that rather than just asking how was it. Um, that might be a little tricky yeah. for a three year old to answer. <laughs> uh, but if you say what are two things you did, how did, uh, and then asking maybe did you do that fast or did you do that slow, um, and then asking those questions, kind of building on each other, specific close-ended questions, then that'll really help your kiddo hone in on what they were doing, how they liked it, things like that, and then you can get more information from them. Yeah, I, I, I've made that mistake as a parent a lot of times of asking vague questions and getting an answer that led me down the wrong path because I didn't ask them why. I didn't ask them why they felt that way about it, and it could be um, something that was a variable that isn't the norm, exactly. or it could be something that could change easily. Well, I didn't like it because I wore these blue shorts today, and these blue shorts are uncomfortable, or you know, I had a bad experience in something else, or um, they had a, a bad experience with something that they are relating to that activity that doesn't have to do with it. So exactly. finding out where that's coming from I feel oh, is exactly. a, a really important aspect of it before passing judgment on anything. Yeah, it's definitely. And when we find the root cause of it, then like you, just like you said, we can make those changes then and then adapt to that. Um, so for me as a behavior analyst, uh, most of our interventions are preventative. Mm -hmm. um, so how can we prevent, like if they say they didn't like something, well, how can we prevent that from happening again? What right. can we do to change the environment to make it so they will like that activity again? And a lot of times, just like you said, it's something as simple as uh, I wanted the blue one instead of the red one right. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. and we, we do have that all the time. I mean, everything from number the numbers on the machines to the colors of the machines to um, a lot of times we have to separate siblings because they don't have always have the best experience next to each other and we'll have completely different results with those types of things. Um, so we document all of that so that from one coach to another we know, hey, That's Johnny great. always needs to be on number three. Make sure Johnny's on number three and, you know, explain you know sometimes number three might not be working and and that we have you know we can't always control that um but if we want to get them very comfortable that that's the best route to go exactly um, yes and that kind of plays back into establishing routines and establishing mm -hmm. that consistency it's one of the biggest preventative strategies you can use because then the kiddo is going to feel much more comfortable going in right now i, I think that's really important Give, setting those expectations of each module we you know we do that we go, when we go from machine to machine we we stop and explain the expectations um and then we reiterate that during the section and then we'll reward for the behavior that was Wonderful. appropriate for that afterwards Wonderful. um and you know i i've seen how that works and in in the activities um and that you know i haven't seen too many kids that it doesn't work with Nope. <laughs> you just described the science of behavior. It's a science. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that's the other thing yeah, is that each so one of them is different. So yes. when you know we have to figure out what makes each child tick exactly. and how to approach them from that aspect, because um, yes. there is no size fits all There's not. for humans, and definitely not little humans. No. So you, we definitely have to identify, just like you said, which rewards work for which children, but those rewards will be rewards, getting your kiddo motivated. And then that kind of plays into if they like it, if they're engaged, if they're listening to the teacher, if they're happy, then they're gonna be learning, they're gonna have a great time, they're gonna want to come back. Right, and I think that um, gauging that as far as, are they enjoying it rather than are they talented at it? Um, yes. Because what is 
necessarily talent when the child is that age. Exactly. Um, you know, we want to see that progress and we want to see that they're enjoying it. And our first thing is, you know, it's fun. Exactly. It's fun. Um, we're developing kids in a way that is fun so that they want to come back and they don't realize that they're learning exactly. and they don't realize that they're getting fitness out of it. We educate them on that, but the first and foremost is that they're, they're having a good time. So wonderful to hear. sometimes that is exploration. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that is not necessarily focusing, um, but that they're getting what they need out of it at that point. Um, and we always get them back. They always they always end up getting to the point that they're that they are focused and they you know they they start getting that reward out of it. Exactly. Um, so you know it's okay for them to wander sometimes. Yeah, it sounds like you're using principles of applied behavior. You <laughs> don't even know it. <laughs> that's, really that's, good, that's good to hear. Yes. <laughs> um, can consistency or repetition can it be overdone? Um, yes, definitely. If, you know, if we, we want to make sure there's definitely a fine line, we want to make sure that they're still engaged and having fun. Um, I think the example I gave you, me as an adult doing a hundred push-ups versus 25 yes. push-ups, you kind of get to a point where it's no longer feels good. It, right. It, it now feels like it's too much, um, or it's painful. Um, so it definitely, there is, there is a, a limit. Um, so we want to push boundaries, but we don't want to overdo it. Um, so what do you think are the most important things that parents should be aware of when choosing how often a child's going to participate in an activity or activities in general? Um, the schedu question. scheduling kids, um, I personally feel has gotten a little bit overboard. Um, I shouldn't say that as someone who is running a children's activity center, um, but is there a point where there's too much? Yes, um, there's definitely a Definitely, you know, you can overschedule your child and a lot of, especially the kiddos I work with, um, a lot of them are receiving therapy 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And so finding that balance can be challenging. Um, I think listening to your kiddo, uh, definitely preparing them for new activities. So if you are going to try something new, um, I would suggest letting them know what the expectations are going to be, letting them know what you're going to be doing. Um, letting them know, you know, this is what's going to be expected for this activity uh, before going in. So you're not just, you are going to go here today, we're going to go here next week, we're going to go here next week. And I said previously, giving it more than one shot. Right. Um, so you're not bouncing around place to place because what it, when, you're, when you're bouncing around like that, what's going to happen for the child is there's not going to be consistency, there's not going to be routine, they're going to be thrown into a new environment regularly and then that sense of comfort and comfortability mm -hmm. isn't going to be there right um so what that's going to do is that's going to that can just regulate your child and then that will decrease the threshold for them having a challenging behavior so um if they went somewhere last week and then they went somewhere new the week before and then they went somewhere new the week before and this is the fourth week they're going somewhere different then they 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 might be at their threshold. They might have met their limit, and you know might be less likely to engage, less likely to learn, less likely to have a great time. Yeah, I, I look at it as the example of trying new foods. Um, exactly. So you know, if you take a new food and you go, oh, they didn't like that, you never introduce it again you're not gonna get results. Exactly. If you also introduce it too quickly, you're not gonna get the desired results. Exactly. But you, you, you've gotta have a balance of those things. Exactly. I actually design feeding programs and yes. <laughs> so we get yes, that question exactly. a lot, so we're gonna have to have a conversation about that because we get parents asking about the trying new foods and, yes. and trying to overcome those obstacles all the time. So that might need to be our next discussion. <laughs> well, on that note, um, thank you so much, Jackie, of for course. talking to us. Um, I hope you parents out in the world of Energy with Kids Fitness are getting a lot of benefits out of our chats. Um, if you do have any questions, any concerns about your child's um, development, um, their behavior, um, Lumiere does everything from social skills workshops to preschools, um, earlier intervention. So they are an amazing resource all the way um, across the board for those um, aspects. And um, they have great, a great website, great blog posts. Um, we'll be sharing more of those on the Energy Wiz site as well. Um, so definitely use them as a resource if you have any needs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.